Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about PF30, uh, the bottom bracket standard which tends to give a lot of people a lot of problems. So I'll talk about the history, uh, the specification, creaking, how to fix that and finally I'll talk about how to fit Shimano cranks into a PF30 bottom bracket. So PF30, PF30 was a standard developed by SRAM as a bit of um, uh, an advancement on BB30. And the reason they did it was to give bicycle manufacturers slacker manufacturing tolerances to work to. Obviously that doesn't help the consumer but it allows large corporate multinational companies to make more money. Now the technical standards of this are very similar to um, BB30, so I have a BB30 bottom bracket replica in my hand. I don't have a PF30 bike so I've had to make a PF30 um, you know, dummy bottom bracket here. They are exactly the same width, so they're both 68 millimeters um, for the bottom bracket shell. The difference is in the hole size. So this one takes the bearings directly, which is BB30, whereas the PF30 requires a plastic cup, which goes in, and then the bearing goes into the cup. So instantly, there is a tolerance stack up there. Um, anything that works with BB30 will work with PF30. The two standards are basically um, the same in terms of execution and in terms of the crank sets they can use. The only difference is the way the bottom bracket is, is assembled. So let, let's look at system weight. Okay, so for system weight we have two 6806 bearings which are the same as for BB30. So they're instantly 41 grams. Now instead of circlips we've got plastic cups. So our system weight is 66 grams, so it's slightly more than for BB30. These plastic cups themselves, they have a dimension, nominal dimension across here of uh, around 46 millimeters. Uh, they're designed to go into a hole that's slightly um, smaller than the actual width of the cup. So they're coming out 45.98. 45.99 ish the hole that it goes into well is, is nominally 46 millimeters you can see that um, well it's coming out 45.94 this vernier is not an accurate way to measure hole sizes but I'm just doing it for the purposes of this video so to assemble a PF30 bottom bracket we've got the cups and the bearings and I'm just going to push these in by hand because they're Delrin um, so uh, there's not much friction in there and I've also oiled the bearings slightly okay then they go into the bottom bracket shell now this will require a press but just to get it started like that. So what I've done now is I've just assembled my press with the bearings and the cups either side. Uh, I'm just now going to press it in. So you just literally tighten and the bearings go in together. And that is a PF30 bottom bracket installation. So bearings either side into the bottom bracket shell. So we've got the PF30 bottom bracket installed. It was relatively straightforward and easy. The um, shells, uh, sorry, the cups are installed here and here and the bearings sit inside them. The same issues that affect BB30 tend to affect PF30 but uh, for, from a performance perspective and that is one of these narrow bearings. Now the narrow bearings lend themselves to having good heel clearance so if that's a problem because on your pedal stroke your um, ankles move towards the center line of the bike this will alleviate that problem because it gives you more clearance. However from a purely performance perspective if you want out and out performance this is not the system to go for and the reason for that is these bearings having them close together uh, reduces the stiffness of the system and loads the bearings more. Now 
if you're a mere mortal, whether you can actually feel that difference is questionable. And to be honest, me with my modest 230 watt FTP, I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference. But if, you, if you're putting out three, 400 watts for your FTP, I think you'll probably get to the point where you would feel a difference and certainly going uphill. The um, use of these bigger bearings um, obviously makes the system last longer. Um, but, and here, here's the but, the but is in terms of the installation of this system. Now the way that this uh, is drilled into the bottom bracket shell area of most bikes is as a, a lathe operation comes in from one side, the frame's then flipped over and then drilled from the other side. Now by having plastic cups, that allows much slacker manufacturing tolerances, so you don't have to line your drill bits up as, as, as accurately, um, and you're relying on the plastic cups to basically take up the difference. Now, if, if you actually do that, and I exaggerate it, so here's my drive side, um, bearing cup and my non-drive side bearing cup. If they're perfectly aligned, there's absolutely no problem. There'll be no creak or anything. However, what happens in, in reality is you tend to have something called parallel misalignment. So for the benefit of the camera, it, parallel misalignment is like that. So one is, um, they're both parallel, but one's slightly in a different position to the other, or the center lines are different. Angular misalignment would be something like that where, um, well actually, I'll have to do that a bit better, but that will be angular misalignment, okay? So parallel misalignment is what tends to afflict PF30 bottom bracket. There's not really much you can do for that um, if you're still working with a PF30 system because you've got whatever hole that uh, Canyon or uh, Trek or whoever drilled in your bike. So, in that respect, um, you're pretty much stuffed. However, most of the time, you'll have fairly accurate bearing um, center line accuracy. So in order to get the system to not creak, the next thing you have to look at is how the bearings fit into the cup and how the cup fits into the shell. Now the tolerance between the bearing and the cup Bear in mind this one's aluminium and most manufacturers use plastic. These things, these plastic cups, tend to be made in the ejection moulding process and the tolerance on there can be fairly slack. So you put the cup in, then put the bearing in and you might feel a bit of wobble or a bit of creak. To fix that, uh, what you really require is retaining compound and then the secret ingredient which is activator and the reason for that is the bearing material does not stick well to plastic um, that's between the bearing and the bottom bracket. So you need to spray that on and then the retaining compound. The same goes for the cup into the bottom bracket shell. Cups, usually plastic, maybe aluminium, but again, activator and then the retaining compound. If you're really, really unlucky, what can happen is the bottom bracket shell, i.e. this, uh, this is the bottom bracket, the face of the bottom bracket shell, i.e. this surface here, might not be flat. Now, the Cervelo bike behind me, that has that problem. The bottom bracket face was not um, flat. So in order to get around that, I had to make my own bottom bracket. And I'll come on to that in a second when I talk about the uh, fitting of Shimano cranks. Now, if like me you want to run Shimano cranks um, with a PF30 bottom bracket, there's a couple of options and they're really the same as uh, if you were to use a BB30 bottom bracket. So here's our PF30 bottom bracket with the standard system bearings. Um, the easiest method to use is to use these things which are Delrin spacer type things and we just put those in either side push them together and then you can run your Shimano crank through the middle like that and then the, the other end just literally goes on 
Okay, so that's method number one. Now the next most popular system is to change the bottom bracket completely and you can do that with one of these three piece style bottom brackets. Now Rotor make these uh, as do a few other manufacturers. Now the way these work is um, very similar to how Shimano envisaged their Holotech system to work from the outset and that is to move the bearings actually at the uh, preferred position which on a Shimano system is 90 millimeters across the edges. Now these two cups slot in from either side, just screw them up and this centre sleeve sits in the middle and that effectively acts like a dust seal across the uh, centre of the bottom bracket so it would be like that um, and then you put your bottom bracket, uh, sorry the crank set shaft through so like so and you can see that uh, the 90mm is maintained and the drive side, sorry, non-drive side crank arm just slides on and then you can tighten it up. Now, both of these systems have an issue with alignment and that is, if they're not perfectly aligned, there's enough give in there to keep your alignment out of kilter. So when I designed mine, which is uh, this one, again, it's one piece uh, and I'll put the drawings for this on the internet so you can, you can see uh, and make your own if you wish. That just slides in from one side. The bearing spacing is kept at 90 millimeters, and it's only reliant on one surface for its axial restraint. So for this one, again, slide it in. Put the um, axle through, and then the crank arm goes on. like that. Um, this system, there is very small, well very little chance of any misalignment between the bearings because it's made in one piece. It also stiffens up the bottom bracket area. Well that's the end of this video on PF30. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did please give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions then uh, please use the box below. Uh, please hit subscribe if you want more of these kind of videos. Um, I also have a website which is www.hambini.com and I will put the plans for this bottom bracket on there so you can um, make your own if you wish. Thank you very much and until next time.